Today's question is a little more cut and dry, but there are some things worth considering deeply. Alma's next question in this series is, do you look forward with an eye of faith and view this mortal body raised in immortality and this corruption raised in incorruption? to stand before God to be judged according to the deeds which have been done in the mortal body. I want to focus primarily on having an eye of faith. What does it mean to you to have an eye of faith? Do you think the Lord's usage of a single eye is deliberate? Why just one eye of faith and not two eyes of faith? Why do we have two eyes and not one or more? Most creatures have only two, but some have up to eight, like spiders do. Potatoes can have ten eyes, but they can't see. <laughs> Just kidding. Anyway, we have two eyes for optimized depth perception, the ability to register and make sense of three-dimensional space, and so that we can perceive distance better. We also have a wider field of view. With only one eye, our peripheral vision is limited. But we can more intently focus on one thing at a time when we are more able to fix our view on a single point. When you see things through both eyes, you are seeing two distinctly different two-dimensional images that the brain processes into a single three-dimensional image. When you only look through one eye, you have less depth perception but can more accurately define a single point because you are seeing that one single image instead of the two being processed as one. Imagine viewing a target through a rifle scope or at an amoeba through a single lens microscope. When our eye is single to one object, everything else is ignored. Nothing else matters. So how do we apply this to God's glory? Well, what is God's glory? In Moses chapter 1 verse 39 we read, This is my work and my glory. To what? bring to pass the immortality and eternal life of man. If you are an LDS return missionary, you probably have Doctrine and Covenants section 4 memorized, or at least you are very familiar with it. I am going to read it because it's pretty short and it's worth reading. So, in DNC section 4, we read, Now behold, a marvelous work is about to come forth among the children of men. Therefore, O ye that embark in the service of God, see that ye serve him with all your heart, might, mind, and strength, that ye may stand blameless before God at the last day. Therefore, if ye have desires to serve God, ye are called to the work. For behold, a field is white, all ready to harvest, and lo, he that thrusteth in his sickle with his might, the same layeth up in store, that he perisheth not but bringeth salvation to his soul. And faith, hope, charity, and love with an eye single to the glory of God qualify him for the work. Remember, faith, virtue, knowledge, temperance, patience, brotherly kindness, godliness, charity, humility, diligence. Ask, and ye shall receive. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. Amen. So much to unpack there, but... I'll let you do that on your own time. So, having an eye of faith is one which focuses on nothing else but God's glory and one's own walk with God, as we just read. God wants to give us all that He has, but most of us are not willing to give God everything that we have. But if you have been born again, born of Him, born of His Spirit, you probably are already doing everything in your power to bring Zion into your life and into your family's life and into your neighbor's lives and into the lives of strangers. Or as we read in 1 Nephi chapter 13 verse 37, again one of my favorite scriptures which I've mentioned before. And blessed are they who shall seek to bring forth my Zion at that day, for they shall have the gift and the power of the Holy Ghost. And if they endure unto the end, they shall be lifted up at the last day, and shall be saved in the everlasting kingdom of the Lamb. And whoso shall publish peace, yea, tidings of great joy, how beautiful upon the mountains shall they be.